Cool guys, so welcome back to another episode of the Happy Chubby Podcast. I have Vaughn on today, which is really, really awesome. Um, and yeah, today, pretty much, I think Vaughn can say a little bit more about himself as well. But um, yeah, today we're just going to do a bit of like a bit of an introduction about like Happy Chappy as a whole, why I started, um, what my, I guess a bit of my vision for it is. And um, yeah, Vaughn's prepped some questions, which he's keen to ask me, so... Yeah, I've briefly gone over them, but um, yeah, I'm kind of keen to go in more in depth into those questions as well. So yeah, how's it Vaughn? How's it, how's it Dan? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, happy yeah. to help. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, a little bit about me. I, I'm I, I'm just a big fan of, of movies and uh, pop culture in, in general. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to ask Dan a few questions so we get to know about the man behind the podcast. So yeah. <laughs> so my first Keen. question today... Have, Dan, is um, what are you dressing up for Halloween coming up this Friday? So that is a good question. Um, I have been thinking about this one quite a bit, um, and I. So my my sort of go to option normally is the X wing trooper from like Star Wars, just like a general uh, rebel trooper, just because I'd made well with the help of my mom, because <laughs> she's amazing at that sort of stuff. Uh, we made like a pilot outfit for one of the Star Wars movies. I think it was Rogue One. Um, so yeah, that's a really cool, like, it's pretty much this orange jumpsuit you put on. Everything's attached to it. So that's like my normal go-to option. This year, I was keen to do something different. I just haven't quite decided on what to do yet. I'm going to something on Saturday night with some friends. We're, watching like a, we're having like a scary movie night. So yeah. We also have like a Hot Rod outfit. I don't know if you've seen Hot Rod. But um yeah, so I might I might try that out as well. We'll see, but um, yeah, probably going to be the the X wing pilot again, just because it's convenience and it fits me well and I like it a lot. So yeah. How about yourself? Are you are you are you, are you dressing up with anything? I, unfortunately, I, I'm uh, at a wedding this weekend. Um, so oh, okay, fair enough. I, I will, won't be. A, I'll, I'll be dressing up as James Bond. Um, there we go. There, there we go. I like it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sure, that's yeah. cool so, yeah. um so let's just let's get into the crux of this uh this uh podcast is that um what what sort of um what is pop culture for for like for people who don't know just like your average joes that go to movies now and then buy some funko pops because they think they're cool but like what 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 essentially is pop culture yeah so that's a cool question um i think like it's so it's uh, uh, pop culture obviously stands for like popular culture in general and um, I think like that can be in terms of like comic book sort of stuff, like you know, like the MCU stuff's kind of huge now. I would say that's like a pretty pivotal part of what pop culture is at the moment. Um, Star Wars, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I think like like it doesn't just include the movie stuff, like as you were saying. Like I think it includes like Funko Pops and like other merchandise. Um, like this T-shirt, for example, I got a pick and pay yesterday. Like it's it's a pop culture T-shirt, you know, of Jurassic Park. And um, yeah, I think it's just a huge part of my life. And I think like, if you're into pop culture, I think you kind of have like your own, almost like your own interpretation of what it is for you. But um, I think generally it is just like a whole, like it's, it's a group of people who follow popular culture. Um, and that can be in like the form of media or merch or, you know, video games or whatever the case may be. And it's really exciting. I love it. I think it's, it's cool. And it's like, like, I think that's how I met you, that's how I met, like, Kashan and Haley. it's all through, like, you know, movies and just our uh, shared interests, which is really awesome, so, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it definitely is, I mean, it's also, I mean, a great way of meeting, like, some genuine people out there, um, yeah. also having common interests and stuff, and, and I know that you said that, you, I mean, it plays a huge, it's pretty much your life, um, a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but what, what do you enjoy most about pop culture? Yeah, so... <sighs> It's it's been pop culture for me has been there since I can remember. Um, like I, I've shared this before in one of my videos. I can't really remember which one it was, but like the Spider Man original trilogy and like I would say probably the prequel Star Wars movies, those films like changed like they changed my life. And like since watching those movies, that's like ever since watching them when I was a, a kid, like I, I've always had that just desire and that passion to almost implement my own pop my own pop culture in a way um in the form of like making my own films eventually and yeah i've kind of messed around with like very basic short concept films on my channel as well 
Um, but even just like talking about movies and that, like it's, it's all a part of it for me. Um, and yeah, I would say like I've also formed some really great relationships because of my like interest in pop culture, which is really epic. Um, and yeah, like I also like love collecting things, which I would say is a part of it as well. So like, yeah, I'm, as, as I'm pretty sure you know, and a lot of the people who are listening or watch my videos know, I love like Funko Pops, for example. Um, used to be huge into like Lego when I was a kid as well. So yeah, I don't know. It's pop culture is like a, it's almost like a lifestyle for me at this point. Um, and yeah, it just makes the world go around for me, you know, so <laughs> yeah. It's funny that you mentioned Lego because I mean, I, I, I myself had a, have a, I've actually had a Starflighter collection of Lego. So I've got a B-Wing, oh, cool. an A-Wing, um, even a fighter and stuff. Um, my, my twin brother, he has a, an AT-AT, um, so a full-size oh, AT-AT. Yeah. Dude, um, so that's yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we some photos. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I must do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, um, dude. So, no, go for it. So, so yeah, um, just moving on with that, I mean, you're talking about your channel and stuff, and it's funny enough, it relates very much for the next question is that what, is your, what was your inspiration to start your movie slash Funko Pop uh, review channel? Cool. Yeah. So, this was one I was kind of. I, like this question I've always been thinking about like since I started the channel um, and I think like for me a big thing was that like I had I had like mates who I talk about movies with so like I have like close, close friends and stuff but I, I always kind of wanted to share my thoughts and like my excitement over things with other people as well so I thought like what would be the easiest re way to reach other people or to to, you know like engage in a bigger conversation and that's kind of where youtube came into the picture um yeah i mean i think like i think i started in 2014 but like i was releasing like very seldomly like videos like i'd release a video like once a month max you know sort of thing and then like as a as a as the years like sort of followed i got more into it made it more of a routine got better at editing got better at recording stuff um so yeah, like I'm obviously still hoping the channel goes a lot further than it is at the moment. But um, yeah, my, my, my passion for it was to sort of get like grow a community of, of people who shared similar interests. And I think it's, it's getting there, which is cool. So yeah. That, that's awesome, man. Um, and, and then just talking about that, uh, that, what sort of major events have you attended? I mean, we know, I mean, in the pop culture universe, we know about the Comic Cons and and the, mm -hmm. the, the old uh, Durban uh, I, uh, comic icon, I think it was, or icon yeah. Durban, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'd say ever since I started the channel, um, like the one of the, the first sort of things I did with the channel where I like attended an event were the Project Mayhem screenings at Stoke Clinical Gateway. Um, and if you guys don't know who Project Mayhem are, they like a, I would say like a collectible, um, like action figure sort of store and they sell st statues funko pops you know whatever else um and yeah they they have they ha used to have like and they still do but not due to covid at the moment but they have like screenings at gateway stoke Kinnacore, which is our local cinema here and um yeah like people would cosplay to those they would sell some of their action figures there and um yeah it was just really cool because it was like a community of people who again like shared the same interest all attending a movie at the same time and it's, it's just like like it made the movie that much more enjoyable so that was really really cool um and i've been going th to those screenings throughout the years which have been really amazing um i think the last one i went to before covid was the harley quinn movie which was like in feb if i'm not mistaken um yeah so that was really cool um yeah then i've also attended like stuff like archon which has been like a like a local yeah i don't know how to really describe it but it's like a group of people who like will go play some like um role-playing games at, at archon and yeah it's a whole bunch of like comic book stores that have come together and like selling stuff really really cool it's almost like a very like small comic con in a sense um and then yeah going off of that obviously comic con over these last couple of years has been really insane been to the last two and then attended the third one via YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or whatever this year, which is cool. Very different, but at the same time, pretty cool. So yeah, it's been cool that South Africa, I feel like has, yeah, gotten more into the sort of pop culture scene in a way. 
Um, and yeah, I've really enjoyed what's been happening so far. So yeah, hope I answered the question. <laughs> Definitely did, uh, because it also ties onto what what events are you looking for, like forward to. Like obviously, hopefully post COVID, um, post lockdown, that things can return to normal. I mean, is there any specific events that you're looking forward to go to? Yeah, so I would say definitely um, next year. Like I'm hoping Comic Con's back to normal because that was just. I think like overall, that's that's one of the bigger events in South Africa at the moment. So yeah, I'm really excited for that to get back and I really hope to, uh, next year it'll be able to sort of be normal again, you know. Um, and then yeah, just the, the movie screenings with Project Ma'am and just movies in general actually, like I really miss the cinema and I've been a couple of times now um, during COVID, which has been awesome, but it's still not the same, like it's not that community feel like it normally is um, to a certain extent. So yeah, I'm excited for that to get sort of back to normal as well, so... Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, now this is like possibly looking into the future when you're all famous. Um, what's sort of a, a, a dream event that you could attend in the near future? Would you Would you aim to go to? So, like sure. a, a, a New York Comic Con or something like that, um, as an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, obviously the the international cons would be amazing. So like New York or San Diego or whatever. Um, but also, like, I would love to eventually one day go to, like, a, a, a preview or press screening for, like, a movie overseas, like a red carpet sort of event for a movie. Um, like, I know some of the bigger, like, sometimes some of the bigger reviewers and, and that get invited to those um, beforehand. And that would be absolutely amazing, just doing a bit of, like, press there and, you know, watching the movie with some of the people who are in the movie. Like, it would be absolutely insane. So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of like a... Next to, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like sitting next to you ever, like, you know, Tom Holland yeah. or, you know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, watching um, Spider-Man or something. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, and and I mean, it's it's not an impossibility, you know, like if you have that sort of audience and reach. So, yeah, that'd be absolutely insane. Um, yeah, I'd really love to do something like that eventually. Or, or even just interview someone like on my channel who's quite like a big star or celebrity. Um yeah, I'd eventually love to get to that sort of position as well. So yeah, like like you did for with um, Blood Show with Vin Diesel, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, it's actually so funny. Like every once in a while, I'll get a comment on that video, like asking if it was real or not. And I'm like, guys, it's definitely fake. It's definitely fake. <laughs> but yeah, that th doing that for real would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can imagine. Sure. I, I I don't know. I think that like if I had to sit opposite like flipping even mark hamill if i had to sit opposite him i think like the inner fanboy would just come out of me and i just lose my mind I'd be like what this is mark hamill totally, dude. <laughs> Luke yeah. Skywalker. I was like what so yeah um but yeah i mean looking forward and we're, we're going to stay on the positive strain train looking forward post covid and um, what are you looking to hope to accomplish with your channel in the near future yeah so at the, at the moment i'm trying to i'm trying to make the, the videos are doing that more sort of unique and different to what other people are doing just because I feel like because YouTube's quite like a a big platform now and like it's very sort of saturated with these sort of things and often like besides like the Netflix sort of content like movies that are releasing in cinemas we often will get a bit later compared to other countries so like whenever I do release a review it's kind of like old news nearly so yeah, I'm trying to figure out like a, a strategy just to make my videos more engaging for people who are watching and um, yeah, just to make my channel as a whole more unique for for people who, who stop by. So yeah, I would love to obviously grow, but at the same time, I, I don't want to grow just for the sake of growing. I want it to be something that's enjoyable for myself and the people who are watching. So yeah, that that's kind of the dream um, and we'll, we'll see where it goes, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, you always want your, your, your audience that are following you to be like real fa uh, fans or we call them brand exactly. champions where, where they're promoting your stuff for almost like free because they, they mm -hmm. found it relevant and it's, you know, exciting. Um, mm -hmm. the, the bit of negative side is like, what has your biggest struggles been with uh, creating your channel po post lockdown, during lockdown? Yeah, so I think... Lockdown has been very weird. Like I've had really good moments in it and then really like just difficult and 
like unmotivating moments as well. Is unmotivating the right word? Demotivating. Demotivating. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so like uh, certain moments have felt really good and then certain moments like you kind of just feel like a bit down and bummed out about everything. Um, and yeah, also like this year, like I resigned from my full-time job um, to go to freelance and then like the next month, literally COVID hits. So yeah, those first couple months, like I was just feeling very lost and, you know, uncertain about things. Um, but at the same time, like the channel was something that remained consistent for me. I did like a... It was very different to the content I normally did, but I did like a 21 days in lockdown because that was meant to be like the initial period of lockdown in our country. Um, so that was really cool. And I was making a video every single day, which was very hard, but it was like challenging and, and good at the same time. Um, and yeah, like, I don't know. I think it's just, for me, it's, it's something that is difficult a lot of the time. Like even just this video call for today, like it's been so difficult to plan it out because... I was busy like the whole weekend then like yeah it's just been crazy so yeah there are certain times where it's like it's extremely difficult especially because i'm not getting like i'm not getting like a, like money from this at the moment which is 100 percent fine but at the same time like you sort of want to prioritize the stuff that you are earning off at the moment you know so yeah it's it's i'm kind of ranting a bit here but it's it is a bit tough at times but at the same time like as i said earlier like it, it's something that i do enjoy doing and that's why i want to put effort into it um but at the same time like i want it to be enjoyable for people who are engaging with the content too i don't just want to make a video and then like i didn't make a video and then expect people to engage with it like if if i as a viewer would not engage with the content then i don't want to release it if that makes sense so yeah that's kind of where my headspace is at, at the moment yeah well, that's good. Uh, as as long as you you have uh, certain standards that you that you want to keep to, um, I think that that's always beneficial. Yeah. Um, so we're down to the last two questions now. So, okay. um, so the, the next one is: um, What sh short term goal are you looking to achieve by the end of twenty twenty? And what is one long term goal that you're looking to achieve? Sure, good questions. I like that. Okay, so the first part of that is. It's, 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 it's going to be tough because we need it at the end of 2020. But I really, like, my goal for 2020 has been to reach 1,000 subscribers on the channel. And I think we like, about halfway there now. So, yeah, I'm going to have to hustle a bit because I'm trying to get, like, 1,000 subs before, like, you know, December 31st. Um, and then, yeah, like, long-term goal is I want to make, like, a, like a short film, but, like a, like, a proper one that I can, like, submit to festivals and that. Um, that is definitely a long-term goal. So yeah, throughout this year, I've been trying to learn how to write screenplays a bit better. And yeah, I've been looking into like how, you know, music is constructed for like movies and stuff like that. So yeah, I've been trying to do a lot of research and, and, um, and sort of almost prep for that sort of stuff in the future. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't know when that's going to be, but it's definitely a goal that I have and it's, it's going to be in the back of my mind forever. So I'm going to have to eventually do it because it's going to drive me crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, de definitely will. Um, it's a way at you at night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. So, yeah. So, so the last question I have to pitch to you is that with you owning or doing your own channel and being a content creator for yourself, um, looking at from where you started from back in 2014, uh, what mm. advice would you give to those out there looking to start their own sort of YouTube channel, review channel, pop culture channel? Sure. That's cool. I like that. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I like, it's hard to give advice because I feel like I'm not in the, like, although I've been a bit consistent in it, like I'm not at the position of like other people, you know, who, who have been doing this for like years and years and years and made it like a full time laugh. And this is still kind of like a sad, sad thing for me. Um, but yeah, I think the advice I'd give would just be to make sure you're in it for the long term, like you're in it for the long game. Um, and it's not, it's not easy. Like, trust me, the, the amount of times I've thought about just stopping everything has been like a lot. Um, but I think, yeah, like I think you just have to be in a position where you know it's going to take a lot of energy, a lot of hard work, a lot of focus. Um, but also at the same time, make sure you're doing it because you do enjoy it and um, you are getting something out of it. Like, 
don't just give and give and give to it if you're not getting anything out of it at the same time so yeah i would say that like and also make it unique to yourself like i think especially at the beginning i was trying to copy other people a lot which i realized wasn't working for obvious reasons um but yeah you got to sort of find your own voice and your own you know unique feeling to your videos i think like like all the subscribers i'm sub like sub to like the the thing that differs from all of them is that they're all like unique different channels and i think that's why i gravitate towards them so much like i wouldn't follow the same channel like you know with different people on it necessarily like i like different channels and i think that's the awesome thing about youtube is everything is so different um so yeah i think make yourself different and and in that way you're going to stand out from everyone else so yeah i i think that's what i would say and uh, it might change over the years but i think that's what i would say at the moment yeah 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 no i definitely i definitely agree with you in terms of that you're in it for the long run um it's yeah. i mean a lot of people a lot of people that get lucky enough to find success overnight um aren't there for a very long time it's more the guys that have invested pretty much their life's work into a youtube channel where they're mm. creating content on a weekly basis even daily basis where they're streaming two three hours even sometimes six hours a day um yeah they're they definitely re realize that it, it is a long-term game uh and mm. i mean you, you're going to reap the reap the rewards if you stay in it for you get eventually get that success and i think the reward is not the monetary value that you earn from it or or anything like that, but building the right followers and right subscribers that are that that sort of inspire you to do the next one because you're getting the right fans that are commenting on your videos and and give and giving you feedback, which is what you want as as a as a video or as a content creator. Um, mm. So that that's just my two cents. So. No, yeah, I I totally agree with you. And like even if you look at like the bigger YouTubers, like say Mr. Beast or you know PewDiePie or whoever, like they 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 like people just kind of think they were like overnight successes, but they weren't. They also put like a lot of effort and graft into their work. Um, and they were unique and different. And that's, I think, what's made them so popular. Um, they like very different channels. They like, you know, like looking at things from a different perspective, having their own spin on the way they edit their videos and the look and feel of their videos. And that's what's brought them success. So I think, yeah, like I think a lot of the time we, we want to almost just copy people straight away because they are successful, which makes sense. But at the same time, I think you're kind of shooting yourself in your own foot if you do that because, yeah, I don't think people want to sub to the same channels, you know what I mean? Like they want to have different, yeah, they want to be sub to different people. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, no, definitely. It's it's like, it's almost like following different brands. I mean, you got your Adidas, your Nike and your Reebok. Yeah, they're all top shoe manufacturers but they're all different brands it's not it, you can't just go and rip off adidas and think i'm going to be as like, successful as adidas it doesn't work mm. that way so yeah yeah I, I i agree with you the finding your own originality i think is the most key important thing and in, in becoming a content creator mm. yeah cool no i agree yeah so, yeah. yeah so that's all all the questions i have today <laughs> cool sick yeah, so I'm trying to, I don't think I, like, it's, did I send you the Instagram questions? I don't think I did. No, no, you didn't. Okay, so there's, there isn't a lot, but I'm going to get your perspective on one or two of these as well. Um, so, what is your favorite underrated movie? Sure. Favorite That's from Caleb. Underrated. Your favorite underrated movie. Okay, let me just wrap. And I'm kind of, I'm now kind of just like dropping that on you. I'll try to think of one as well. Uh, sure. Um, um, underrated. Um, I, 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 it was a zombie movie. However, okay. I, I, for some, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of it. But oh, yeah. know, the plot, the plot was like they were they were in an in an abandoned city and like that like the guys would go out to go and get resources and then come back um it was a pretty low budget film in fact i think it was an actual ripoff of that um that other movie that was who i can't remember but they had like a juggernaut sort of like truck where they would go and then all of a sudden the zombies sort of like learn to all work together and they walk and they attack this like city and it felt like it was a ripoff of that one um I can't remember. I can't remember. I, yeah, I, the, 
I mean, the last time I saw this underrated movie was when blockbusters were still around and I hired it on DVD. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was blown away about how good it was. Um, I can't even remember. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to Google it and find out for you. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, I, I just enjoy zombie movies, to be honest with you, and gore and thriller. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm trying to think for myself as well. Um, I mean, I said this on one of the podcasts a couple of weeks ago, but like, I watched a movie called Synecdoche, New York, which was a film by Charlie Kaufman, and I know Charlie Kaufman's got his own like hardcore fan base but that film was just it's still in my head to this day like it was such a such a weird movie but at the same time it's like so deep and like interesting and it's just made me think about a lot of things since watching it so i'd say that's like up there at the moment with one of my favorite underrated movies um yeah and then this other question so this is from john and he wants to know thoughts about jared leto being in justice league 1.2 so to to add on to this question a bit um there's a lot of like new people who are being introduced into the Justice League movie. Well, not necessarily new people, but people who weren't in like the original, I guess, idea of what Justice League was going to be. So, what are your thoughts on like the sort of stacked cast at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I think also like Michael Keaton, I think was mentioned as well, if I'm not mistaken, as Batman or appearing as like an older Batman in the Justice League. I think yeah, I think that might be the Flash movie that's coming out oh, the afterwards. Flash movie? Uh, but, um, Sorry, I just name? saw Michael Keaton and I was like, oh my word, Michael Keaton, I mean, they, not Batman. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm very keen um, for that. Yeah, I mean, Jared Loretta, I thought, I thought his performance was okay as Joker. Um, he's definitely not my favorite. Um, uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't like to rate actors, but I mean, flipping, yeah. his leisure was amazing as Joker and I don't think that's that's a performance that's going to be easily replaced. Um but yeah, in terms of that stacked cast, I mean, sure, I'm looking forward to so getting more and more excited as we draw nearer to a release date for that movie. Um, mm. It's the Jack Snyder Justice League we're talking about, so yeah, just for yeah. the for the online viewers, so that they know which movie we're talking about. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, no, I'm 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 looking forward to it, and I, sure, because uh, yeah, and Christian Bale was was the team mentioned as well. Was I mean there? Yeah, there were there were rumors about all these different people appearing yeah i think like because i think because i think the flash is going to be like a flashpoint vibe so i think they're going to try to bring like cameos of different people into that um but yeah like the justice league is sounding interesting because i think it's like they're splitting it into four different parts on hbo max um and like yeah, so jared leto is now coming back as joker um the dude, I can't remember his name at the moment, but they're, they're bringing back Deathstroke, who was like in one of the after credit scenes. Joe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Joe something. Something with the M. I can't remember his surname. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm keen for the Zack Snyder Justice League. But at the same time, I think what people need to remember as well is that like, this is at least from my perspective. I, I didn't li- like, I, 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 I would say I liked Man of Steel quite a lot. I think it was a good movie. But I did not love Batman vs Superman, to be honest. There are a few great moments in it, but I didn't love it. So, yeah, like, although everyone's hopped up on the Snyder Cuts, and I also kind of am, I must say, because I'm keen to see Zack Snyder's vision. But for me personally, Zack Snyder hasn't always been, like, my personal favorite, like, action or comic book director, if that makes sense. Like, again, I don't like also bashing on people because I know everyone's got their own tastes and stuff, but... Yeah, like I, I think everyone just needs to keep their expectations at a certain level for this because I don't know if it's going to reach the expectations that people sort of have preconceived now because of, of this, of this. Yeah. Yeah, I would say like those people who watch Justice League, keep your expectation exactly the same and then see what happens. If you get blown away, you get blown away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah. Um, I, I, I love I love the way that Jason Momoa is now portraying Aquaman. Um, yeah. I don't know if you ever watched the old animated series of Justice League or Justice League of America with with how dumbed down they make Aquaman look and how weak he looks. And now with an actor like Jason Momoa, how he's turned that character completely 180. And it's just like, yeah. you know, people never like, I mean, you watch Big Bang series and like 
you know, right, the one Halloween uh, episode is like, oh, I don't want to go as Aquaman, but now it's like, I want to go as Aquaman, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how, like, a, a good, strong actor has changed perception of, like, one character that if you look back, I mean, in the comic books, Aquaman is like, he's the king of the sea. I mean, he's awesome. Mm -hmm. But in Justice League of America, I think they make him look, like, not as strong, which is like, you know, he isn't just a sub hero. He actually is like up there with like your Wonder Woman's, your Superman's, um, and mm. even your Martian. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I must say, I think uh, actually like all the, all, all the cast in the Justice League, um, I really enjoyed. Like, we didn't get to see much of um, Ray Fisher, who was Cyborg, which is kind of bumming. But, um, and even the Flash, I wish we kind of got to see more of Ezra Miller's Flash. But I think, yeah, like Jason Momoa has been amazing. Gold Goddard's been amazing. I love Ben Affleck's interpretation of Batman. And I think also Henry Cavill as Superman has been so, so good. Like, I've loved his, his character. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. But um, it's going to be very interesting to see how it all goes down. Because I think it is almost becoming a bit of like a mini-series now compared to a movie. Which I'm still fine with, but yeah. Okay, I'm just going to see if we've got any other cool questions here. Um, you haven't seen The Boys, have you? Uh, I have seen The Boys, yes. I have you? Yeah. Have yeah. you seen season two as well? No, I haven't seen season two. I've seen season one, though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I don't really want to get into season two. <laughs> I know, it's short, it's short. I don't want to get into that question because I don't want to like spoil anything for those who haven't seen it. Okay, sick. I think that's that's cool for today. I might put some of these other Instagram questions into um, next week's podcast. But Vaughn, bro, thanks so much for being on today. I flipping yeah, appreciate no it. I know it was last fun. minute, but yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Um, okay, have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> where, so, do you have anything like you want to share like with people, like where they can check you out or follow you? I know you got like your your. Um, Food page food, on Facebook food and that. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I dude, don't like plug it, bro. Like. Plug it. <laughs> now, come on, dude. I, uh, <laughs> just do I, it. I, 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 I just like one, one piece of advice that I can give, uh, just a bit okay. of background by me, is that I work for a digital marketing agency um, and I deal with sort of Con like I don't create content myself. I'm I'm not creative at all. I'm a statistical analytical person that looks at different platforms all day. Um, but what I can say to those who are looking to create a YouTube channel is that make yourself findable. Uh, findable. That's, I don't think that's an actual word. But I mean, be on different platforms. Be on the Twitters. Be on the be on the Instagrams. Be on the Facebooks. Um, just get yourself out there as much as you can and in front of people as much as you can. And um, people say like, oh, how many times must I post a week? Three times, two times. Like, no, you should be posting every single day. Um, you're a content creator. And even though, yes, it's hard because it's a sideline sideline hobby that you're doing or that you've got a passion for, um, you need to be posting every single day. Um, it's, 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 that's what's come down to, to because there's so many people out there that are posting once or twice a week um, which are just adding more content, more content, more content. And the thing is, you're not findable or not discoverable because you're not in front of them all the time. Um, and by adding every single day, if you're on there, you're adding one post, one video, or or just a tweet here, a tweet there. Like Even if, uh, I mean, people forget the Thursday throwbacks that we used to do. I mean, some people still do it, or the Flashback Fridays. I mean, still do it. Go back and say, like, hey, people really need to see this review on Justice League back then, you know, Thursday throwback, look at this review thing. So that that's just like my little input because I know that that sort of stuff works um, with businesses and there's no reason why it can't work with uh, content creators out there. So, yeah. Mm. Just Dude, some flipping love that. Words of wisdom. <laughs> Thanks, so, yeah. yeah. I think so, it's very cool and I think it's very helpful for a lot of people as well. So yeah, dude, thanks so much for being on today. Really, really appreciate it. And to those listening, I'll be back next week. Um, yeah, I'm excited for next week. I think the guest is locked in. I just need to confirm with him. But yeah, it's going to be cool. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a great week going forward. And we'll see you soon. Sick. Cool.